Hi, I'm here today to show you how to lap a heat sink. Well, first off, you need your materials. And here is my Thermalrite Ultra Extreme as my heat sink. Secondly, I got the sandpaper. Now, usually, you need something about 200 grit to start off with. You need something low because uh, what happens is that I know a lot of people tell you to get something higher, like 400 or 600. But to get the surface really flat, you need to grind it down. And but to grind it down, you need something low grit, not high grit. A high grit sandpaper will get that uneven surface very smooth, but it'll still be uneven. To get it flat, you need this 200 grit sandpaper. Now you start off with the 200 and you move up slowly. You can move up in steps like 200, 400, 600, 800. It gets easier as you go up. Uh, but to get that complete mirror finish, you're going to have to use polishing compound. Now that's what a lot of people are missing. They sometimes look at other people's lapping jobs and they don't understand why theirs can't be as polished. Well, that's the secret, using polishing compound, like turtle wax. Anyways, I'm not going to tell you more about that. What I'm here to tell you is how to lap your heat sink. Um, oh yes, lastly, you'll need your glass sheet. I use a glass sheet because it's the flash thing you can get that's cheap and your base will only be as flat as whatever the surface you're lapping on is. So here's your heat sink and you, p you can either tape the uh, sandpaper onto the glass sheet or you, I, can, I just hold it. Um, as for the heat sink, when you're lapping it, a lot of people have been lapping it, but when they hold it, they hold it from the top. And it's really hard to keep it flat while you're sanding it, if you're holding it from the top. So one simple trick is to hold it as close to the base as possible, like this. So when you're lapping it, you're putting more even pressure on the whole thing. As for the lapping process, what you want to do is keep going in one direction. Now, we're doing this so that on the base, all the scratches are facing the same way. Now, as you can tell, this base isn't lapped very well yet, and it has a long way to go. Because the scratches aren't all facing the same direction, and you can easily tell because the edges are have scratches facing all different directions. Now you want to keep lapping it in one direction until it's pretty much the whole base has scratches facing the same way. Then after a while you want to turn it 90 degrees in whatever direction. Just make sure that you're going 90 degrees in the same direction. Then you want to lap it some more. And keep doing that until it's all facing the same direction again. Now you keep changing directions until you go at least 360 degrees a few times. You want to keep doing the low grit <coughs> until all the base scratches are facing the same way. As you can see here, like I said, there's a long way to go. So you don't ever want to move up the grits until you have even the corners all facing the same direction for the scratches. When you have the base scratches facing all the same direction, then you can finally move up to the next grid. Now when you're moving up to the next grid, you're really trying to smooth out the surface because it, by, your hit, by the time you're hitting the next grid, the base is supposed to be smooth already or flat. Now to test if the base is flat, you always want to constantly be checking it. And to check it, you use the razor blade test, but in this case, I have a metal ruler. Now you just touch the ruler to the base, and you just see how much light's creep creeping through the bottom. Now you want to do this all over the base, and, and in both directions, or maybe even sideways sometimes. 
to do uh, by doing that you can tell if it's flat or not um, af after you can tell pretty much no light is going through that's when you know you can go up to the next grid well that's my basic crash course on lapping your heatsink till next time